What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah Moore Parties. And you can find my written work and my running back rankings for Dynasty Leagues, Devi Leagues, Rookie Drafts at NoahMoreParties.com. And today I want to talk about aging running backs. Uh, it's important to, in Dynasty Leagues, in Redraft Leagues, avoid running backs who are about to fall off the age cliff, who are washed. And because of that, it's important to know which guys who haven't fallen off the age cliff yet are likely to do so in the future, in the upcoming season. And at NoMoreParties.com, a couple weeks ago, I published an article looking at 17 running backs in the NFL who are, number one, valued in the top 50 of Keep Trade Cuts Dynasty rankings, and number two, are at least 26 years old or will be at least 26 years old on September 1st of this year, basically at the start of the season. Um, so these are guys who are over the, the tr our traditional conception of the age apex is like 26 years old for running backs and guys who are relevant in fantasy football, valued highly um, in Dynasty, guided by a few key principles. Um, two different studies that I look at in assessing, you know, just kind of assessing like how to approach aging running backs, how to know whether or not guys are going to fall off a cliff or not. The first of those is from Adam Harstad, at Adam Harstad on Twitter, one of the smartest guys on Twitter in the football space, period. Um, and he, he did a study a while ago and kind of concluded that it makes more sense to think of running back career arcs, not in terms of like an arc or like an age curve, like in, in the way that that sort of language would imply, but it's better to think of running back age curves as having a greater degree of flatness than that. Um, and that they'll, they'll typically experience a miniature decline in the season immediately preceding a sharp and sudden decrease in performance that becomes more and more likely the older they become. He uses the, the analogy of like uh, ping pong balls and like the NBA draft lottery and the likelihood that any running back falls off the age cliff and just like ceases to be an effective player or a useful fantasy asset. It doesn't follow a curve of like, you know, they start out as a rookie and get better and better until they like slowly get worse and worse until they're not useful. It's more like they experience a slight increase in performance from, you know, rookie to age 24 or whatever, but then it's flat until you're basically just rolling dice or picking ping pong balls until eventually like you just roll double ones or whatever it is and the guy falls off. But most of the time for running back specifically, there's a mini decline immediately preceding that season. And the other study that I like to look at is Tej Seth at Tej FB Analytics on Twitter um, identified two important benchmarks with running backs. Number one is the end of their rookie contract. So guys who have played their first four, you know, for first round picks, sometimes that's five years in the league. That is a significant point in their career where after that point, we can expect guys to carry significant risk of falling off the age cliff. And the other benchmark to keep an eye out for is 1,500 career carries. Uh, so end a rookie contract, 1,500 carries. For the purposes of this study, all 17 guys who we're looking at here are beyond their rookie contract. So every single one of them has hit that first benchmark. But in that article on nomoreparties.com, I looked at all 17 of these running backs. Here, I wanna talk about four of the most interesting ones. And basically my methodology was to look at player performance in various rushing efficiency metrics in recent seasons and you know look at those to identify any recent declines in performance, any downward trends over the course of multiple seasons. And I, I, I you know, to, to a, to bring some sort of, uh, I don't know if it's objectivity, but to kind of quantify these things for myself, I rated each rushing efficiency category on a zero to three scale, zero indicating no alarm at all, like this player's performance is standard with what he's been doing over his career. Maybe it's even good, especially good relative to how he's been over his career. Zero is no alarm. Three would be extreme alarm, like he fell off a cliff in this particular area, or this is a three-year slide to where he's now not good at all in this area. And then I, you know, kind of totaled those scores up among all the rushing efficiency categories. The guys who score higher are obviously, you know, at least seem to me to be at greater risk of falling off. And then I adjusted from there based on uh, Tej Seth's thresholds for carries and any recent injury history for the players involved. Again, there were 17 of these guys who are going to be 26 plus in 2023, are ranked in the top 50 on KTC, which includes Christian McCaffrey. I'm just going to go through them all. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, Tony Pollard, Derrick Henry, Miles Sanders, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, David Montgomery, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, James Conner, Damian Harris, Rashad Penny, Javante Williams, not Javante Williams, Jamal Williams, and Samaj P. Ryan. I'm going to talk about four of them. 
The first of them is Aaron Jones, who will be 29 in December. He's 28 right now. Aaron Jones is the second oldest in that entire group behind only Derrick Henry, but he scored a grand total of zero alarm points in this study. The dude is still playing as good as he ever has. Uh, the rushing efficiency categories I looked at are Number one, box adjusted efficiency rating, which essentially is a team relative efficiency metric adjusted for the sorts of box counts that a player is seeing based on the idea that the environment that a player is operating in is a large determining factor in how successful he is on the ground on a per carry basis. So comparing his performance to the collective other guys in the same offense reveals a little bit more about his performance than simply looking at his raw yards per carry does because that's influenced by his offensive line play, the opponents they're playing, and, and things like that. So comparing him to players in the same situation is helpful, as well as adjusting things for the kinds of box counts that he's seeing, because the amount of defenders in the box is a major determining factor in the outcome of each running play. So there's box adjusted efficiency rating. We've also got relative success rate, which does the same thing, uh, but is based on uh, how often are you producing positive outcomes on your carries on a per carry basis rather than a, a per carry average. But it's also adjusted for box counts compared to teammates, things like that. Um, and then we've got rush, rushing yards over expected per attempt, raw yards per carry, missed tackles force per attempt, and yards after contact per attempt. That's six metrics that, in my mind, are some of the, you know, raw, raw yards per carry is what it is. But other than that, we've got like through contact and breaking tackle metrics, as well as some of the most contextually, contextually heavy metrics we have for evaluating running back play in box adjusted efficiency rating, relative success rate, RYOE per attempt, fairly full picture in my mind of like how a guy is doing. And in those metrics, Aaron Jones jumped from the 69th to the 80th percentile last season in box adjusted efficiency rating from the 28th to the 54th in relative success rate. He was 89th in 2021 in RYOE, 88th last season from 75th to 89th in raw yards per carry. Uh, he was he had a career high in missed tackles force per attempt last season and went up from 3.15 yards after contact per attempt to 3.2 last season and has missed 0, 2, 2, and 0 games in the last four seasons, respectively. He averaged 5 yards per carry last year for the fourth time in his career. Really, the only indication of decline from him was the 28th percentile relative success rate that he posted in 2021, basically indicating that on a per carry basis, he was not creating positive outcomes, not churning out first downs, keeping his offense on schedule at a rate impressive relative to what other Packers running backs were doing at all. But he bounced back in 2022 and was around the 50th percentile there in both 2020 and 2019. It looks to me like his down season in that particular category in 2021 was more of a blip. But he's now scored 14 or more PPR points per game in five straight seasons. He hasn't been significantly hurt. He hasn't suffered a play level performance decline. And he's multiple seasons away from the 1,500 carry threshold. Like, he's the RB25 on Keep Trade Cut right now in the same range as guys like Alexander Madison, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco. He's not immune to falling off, but he's shown virtually no sign of, like, not being solidly in his prime still. Aaron Jones is falling down the dynasty rankings as if he's no longer a, you know, a useful fantasy asset or as if he's, you know, about to fall off the age cliff. And maybe he does. I just think his recent performance doesn't indicate that at all. Among this group of, what, 17 running backs who are above the age apex of 26 years old, Aaron Jones is playing as well as he ever has. Really something that not a lot of those other guys can say. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe Nick Chubb can say that. Tony Pollard can say that. But Aaron Jones is the second oldest among, among these guys, and his recent performance indicates that we shouldn't really be that worried about him falling off. So I'm still pretty excited, pretty confident in Aaron, in Aaron Jones being a high-end NFL running back and a high-end fantasy asset, at least in 2023. On the other end of things, I want to talk about three other guys on the other end of things who all had several alarming trends in their recent performance. Uh, the first is Derrick Henry, and I was all over the Derrick Henry could be washed train last offseason. He was coming off a season in which he broke a foot, missed like 11 games, but was also as inefficient as, he's, as he'd been since his rookie season. From 2020 to 2021, Henry declined in box-adjusted efficiency rating, he declined in relative success rate, he declined in RYOE, he declined in raw yards per carry, he declined in missed tackles force per attempt, and he declined in yards after contact per attempt. 
That's every metric that I looked at in the study. He dropped off many of those categories. He dropped off precipitously. But then Henry stayed healthy last season and he was awesome again. His box adjusted efficiency rating, his relative success rate, his missed tackles forced, and his yards after contact per attempt all returned to pre-injury levels or, you know, right around pre-injury levels. He was a beast again. Like, I was just wrong last year. I thought he was, I thought the broken foot and the down year were, you know, the canary in the coal mine for, like, his time as a dominant runner being over was absolutely not the case. His raw yards per carry and RYOE numbers last year did both look like, you know, the 2021 marks more than they did during like the solid prime years from like 2018 to 2020 for him. But still, the bounce back last year would really be enough for me to still be in on Henry as like a high level contributor going forward. I would be willing to look past the down 2021 season, the foot injury, you know, the missed games, things like that. Except for the fact that last year, Derrick Henry crossed the 1500 carry threshold and he's now 250 carries beyond it. Like he's well into the portion of his career now where we would expect running backs to start declining severely in play level performance, something that he already did two years ago. The upside is still there, but and you know maybe he's just one of these like superhuman athletes who's going to age better than other mortals will. Like that that's a possibility. Some guys do that. Adrian Peterson, LeBron, like maybe Derrick Henry's one of those guys. But things are getting scary. We've already seen a season in which he declined, got hurt, and now he's beyond the, the carry threshold where we typically see guys no longer be as effective as they were. Derrick Henry is at severe risk of falling off, in my opinion, in 2023, especially given that the Titans offense is no longer constructed in such a way that like he'll be helped. He's going to have to like put the team on his back to produce high in fantasy numbers again. The next guy in this category was surprising to me because I view him as a sort of like just solid player, maybe like a do-it-all jag type, but an underrated steady veteran, and that's Samaj P. Ryan, who regressed in four categories recently. Uh, his Bay rating dropped from the 89th to the 63rd percentile last season. His raw yards per carry dropped from 4.47 to 4.15, marking his third straight season with a decline in raw yards per carry. His missed tackles force per attempt was 0 0.28 between 2018 and 2020. Those are elite numbers. 0 0.28 is really good. He was breaking tackles at a ridiculous rate, from 2018 to 2020. In the last two years, he's posted numbers of 0 0.14 and 0 0.15. So he's he's halved the rate at which he's breaking tackles in the last two seasons. Um, and his yards after contact per attempt dropped from 3.86 to 3.87 last season. That's more than three quarters of a yard. So he's no longer dealing with contact as well as he has. Um, his raw yards per carry and his, his team relative metrics have fallen off perhaps as a result he is still slightly above average in in most of these categories and like i said i'm still in on p ryan as like an early down starting option given like javante williams's injury recovery and the fact that p ryan can just kind of do it all and seems like a good candidate to be a third down back in the sean payton offense in denver but harstad's research like i mentioned before shows that quote running backs tend to experience a mini decline before they fall off the cliff entirely a mini decline is exactly what happened to Samaji Piran's efficiency numbers pretty much across the board last season. You can't be surprised if that was the mini decline that comes before the age cliff for Samaji Piran in 2023. And the last guy I want to talk about is Miles Sanders, who is also surprising here considering that 2022 was easily his most productive season. He was what, like the RB, RB10 in fantasy, I think. But raw and contextualized measures of his efficiency suggest he took a step back last season. His raw yards per carry dropped from 5.57 in 2021 to 4.96 in 2022. That's still good, but it's, what, half a yard less, six-tenths of a yard less. His box-adjusted efficiency rating also slightly dropped off from the 77th to the 69th percentile. Still good, again. His RYOE, however, uh, took a precipitous drop from 0 0.88 in 2021, which means in 2021 on a per carry basis, he was contributing 0 0.88 rushing yards over expected per attempt. He was averaging nearly a yard per carry more than what he should have been based on the situational factors in which he was carrying the ball. He was very good, adding a lot of value on the ground in 2021. His RYOE per attempt dropped to negative 0 0.12 yards per attempt last season. So he went from adding nearly a yard of value per carry in 2021 to adding 
negative value on a per carry basis in 2022, that's the 94th percentile to negative. Like that, that's a massive drop off. And it kind of seems to me, like I'm not positive, I can't, can't take anything solid away here, but we're just, you know, interpreting data. It seems to me that like maybe a subtle regression in his like play to play effectiveness in his like inherent ability to run the ball, a subtle regression in those areas has been masked by raw efficiency that's still high being kept afloat by like a dominant offensive line in Philadelphia. They ranked third and fifth, according to PFF, and run blocking grade in the last two years, an elite run blocking unit. And Miles Sanders has also experienced a two-year drop-off in relative success rate. In 2020, he was in the 89th percentile. 2021, 46th percentile. Last year, 38th percentile. So big steps down here in recent seasons for, for Miles Sanders. He's just not churning out positive outcomes on as consistent a basis as he was a couple years ago, now doing it like actively not very often despite playing with a great offensive line and his yards after contact per attempt is also dropping he averaged 3.33 yards after contact per attempt across his first two seasons in the league across his last two seasons in the league that number has been 2.9 so that's been dropping as well he's not dealing with contact as well not churning out positive outcomes as frequently not adding value on his touches last season despite good raw numbers good production numbers even his yards per target last year dropped from 4.6 in 2021 to 3.0 last year that's absolutely abysmal i don't hate the opportunity for him in carolina like it seems like he's set up nicely to be a workhorse running back on an offense that should be ascending but if miles sanders was a declining player propped up by basically ideal circumstances in Philadelphia the last couple seasons, there's a chance he's now on a much worse team in Carolina while also teetering on the edge of the age cliff. And that would not be a good thing. So look out for Miles Sanders. Look out for Samaj P. Ryan. Look out for Derrick Henry. And, uh, you know, maybe take some shots on Aaron Jones. He's old, but still good. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you next week. Peace.